Chad. And you know who embraced it more than anybody else? The black population. It's incredible. You see black people walking around with my mugshot. You know, they do shirts. When you heard that, what did you think? <sighs> Big sigh. First Big of all, sigh. I'm just going to say this. If I see a black person walking around with Trump mugs, I'm gonna punch him in the face. Charles. I know, Gil. Charles. Gil. Gil. Gil you, I, you really can't say that because a, you don't mean that. Oh, I mean that sincerely. <laughs> I'm gonna just tell you something. And then you will be arrested for assault. And then what? I'm gonna bail myself what? out and go celebrate. <laughs> if I still don't no, encourage seriously. him, don't encourage him. Okay, but it, go ahead. Seriously, continue. <laughs> First of all, if I was at that. At that conference, yeah. I got up and walked out. That was an insult to all black people. Because mm -hmm. he's basically just saying, and first of all, black, to, to compare black history where we've been discriminated against to his plight. Yes. Well, first of all, he's a billionaire. Mm -hmm. And they're prosecuting him for stuff he did wrong. They're prosecuting him for stuff he did wrong. And for him to it's compare... It's in the court system, Charles. We have to wait. It's still in the court system. But continue, continue. Well, continue. They, some of the stuff is true. They did storm the Capitol. Well, people, yeah. They did say that the, the election was stolen. Those yeah. aren't lies, Gail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are They facts. did say that. They okay. did say that. But to compare, I would have got up and walked out. Mm -hmm. Because it's not a fair comparison. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a billionaire. He's had a great life. He's been president of the United States to insult black people who have been discriminated against all these years to put them in the same category, I, I, I was just offended. I, yeah. I mean, When did Charles Barkley become the overseer on a democratic plantation? How does he feel comfortable threatening millions of free thinking Americans? Who the hell does Charles Barkley think he is? Well, it seems as though he's been tasked by his puppet masters to get out there and do the shuck and jive and get the other mind slaves back in line. After all, he knows where his bread is buttered. Charles makes his millions commentating on NBA games for TNT. And here he is on a sister network telling other black people what they need to do. You need to get back in line or I'm gonna whoop you, or rather punch you in the face. Why did this happen? Well, I'm going to tell you why. Because November is coming up fast and the puppet masters need to stop the bleeding. So they sent out chuckles to get out there and do the shuck and jive and try to get people back onto the plantation. Don't believe me? Well, I got something to show you that can prove what I'm saying. What I'm going to show you is a snapshot of the black vote trend line. And FYI, just to let you know, it was published by the same network that he appeared on, CNN. So what you're seeing right now is a poll by CNN, and I've highlighted in red the most appropriate part of this for you to focus on, the black vote. In 2020, the exit polls in which Biden won the election, he had a 75%, 75% lead over Donald Trump. New York Times poll from yesterday, or rather two days ago, shows that lead at only 43%. He has lost 32% of the black vote just in the last four years. 32% of black people have removed the shackles and have run from the plantation. So of course, they need to do whatever they can, even if it means advocating violence to get people, black people, back in line. But a lot of us, millions of us, aren't falling in line anymore. We're off the plantation. We're free thinkers. We broke the shackles and that terrifies them. Let me show you a small sample of how some black people are reacting to Cut Barkley. This tweet here is from a man called Chicago's very own Jay Hustle from the Ghetto News Network. Charles Barkley said if he sees a black person wearing anything MAGA basically or supporting Trump, he's going to punch him in the face. Okay, punk. And there he is. Got his gear on right there. Got another one for you. This guy's a big dude. Anyone seen Charles Barkley? I heard he was looking for me. I grew up in the, you hit me, I'm gonna hit you back era. And this big hulking black man has got the mugshot t-shirt on. Sorry, Chuck, you wanna take us on? You got you get in line, cause there's a whole bunch of us. And then here's another one, uh, somebody I'm pretty sure Charles Barkley won't want to take on. Charles Barkley said he'll punch black Trump supporters. Good luck. Why? Because one of the guys sitting right there is Mike Tyson. So good luck, Chuck. Chuckles.
Cuck Barkley. You got a lot of people you're going to be taking on and punching in the nose or punching in the face. I don't think you can do it. I, I don't think you got it in you anymore. We're not just going to sit back and let you hit us. We're going to hit you back. It's driving them crazy that they can't put the shackles back on. Now I got a couple of videos to show you that really underscore that point. This video is from Kanye West. I think it was a couple years ago, but he says something very intriguing that applies today. Oh, you, they can't, they, they, they try to suppress you, but that's how they try to categorize. They can't control me, you get what I'm saying? It's all about control. It is completely about controlling how people think and what they do. And they can control Shaq. They can control Charles Barkley. They can control LeBron James. They can control Jay-Z and Beyonce. I know you, man. But they can't control me. You see, you. it ain't no name I won't name. Exactly. It's up. It's up. The gig is up. That's it. We're no longer on that plantation. And many of us aren't going back. Doesn't necessarily mean that one candidate or another is getting our vote, but you can't assume it anymore. We're not just going to be lockstep in doing whatever you tell us. Those days are long gone. So I got another one for you. Let me give you a brief history lesson. An overseer was a black guy. His job was to keep other black slaves in check. Sound familiar, Chuckles? The overseer was fed well. He had free range. He was paid well, had the best women. And his job was to keep other black slaves in check by whipping them, even killing them mm -hmm. in front of everybody. That what an overseer was, and we have overseers today. Charles Barkley was on CNN, he was paid well, and he made a threat to any black guy that would wear a mega hat, he would punch them. Charles Barkley is today's overseer. So true, so true. And if you can't see that, I can't help you. If you think that Charles Barkley was, you know, telling us that we're the ones who are brainwashed, you're the ones who are brainwashed. If we can't think for ourselves, what does that mean? How is Charles Barkley going to tell somebody what they should do? What makes his opinion stronger than your own? What makes his due diligence? You don't know from what point of view he's coming from. Like I said, he gets paid very well to commentate on the NBA, and I won't even go with it in that direction, for TNT, owned by the same company as CNN, which he happened to be on with Oprah Winfrey's, her own basically slave slave master. Gail King was best friends with Oprah Winfrey. That's how she got into the business. I know this because I remember her getting her start in Bloomfield, Connecticut, which I'm from. This is all one big incestuous bubble. And they're doing these things to make you understand you need to do what we tell you. Don't step out of line. Don't think for yourself. That's why they want to take on Elon Musk. They don't want these videos on Twitter. They don't want people talking about what Charles Barkley said and openly infecting other people. They don't want us waking up. You know, people say, you know, you don't understand what woke means. Oh, well, I understand what woke means. I understand fully. Unfortunately, for those of you who think you own the wokeness, people have co-opted it. We're no longer taking the BS we're no longer just swallowing the pill, except maybe the red pill. But in any event, Jason Whitlock aptly, I mean, just nailed this straight on. Now, I've had some problems with what Jason Whitlock has said about Deion Sanders. I didn't agree with him, but what he says here about Charles Barkley, I, I think it's spot on. So I'm gonna play this and we're gonna react to it. This is all coming from a real and authentic place. How did we get here? And I don't know, how did we get here? To where other people feel comfortable telling you they're gonna punch you in the face if they see you on the street wearing a certain hat, a certain t-shirt. Are you effing kidding me? And this is the entire corporate media has convinced Barkley and a bunch of other people that the key to the success and the survival of black people is the destruction of Donald Trump. They didn't really have to do much convincing. They waved some bucks in front of their face and say, hey, you're you comfortable? You, you like these millions coming in? You want to see these millions continue to come in? Then uh, you need to get out there and do your shuck and jive. How can that be?
How can that be? What happened during the four years of the Trump administration? What happened to black people? I've asked many, many people that. What was racist? What happened? Why are you so incensed? Was ga- were gas prices better? Were food prices better? Was your bank account better? Was life better? How can you be so upset? What's wrong? Why are you so incensed to the point where you have to have celebrities going out there and threatening people? Someone walk me through it. What happened to us during those four years that justify this level of delusion and derangement? And that's what it is. It is complete delusion and derangement because it's inexplicable. They can't tell you what's wrong. They can't put their finger on it. They've just been conditioned to the point where it must be wrong. Black people aren't supposed to do this. Explain to me why not. Were were things really that bad? And I lived through those years. Were we put in chains? Were we put in concentration camps? What happened other than the puppet masters who cut checks for people on TV? The secular global elites who disavow Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I know some of you guys don't like to hear that. If I lose some subscribers, that's fine. But you can just see so many things. I'm not going to go into all of them here, but you can see what's been happening and what's been thrust upon you and what's been pushed. And you can tell there's an agenda definitely afoot gave a different set of instructions. And it's like, we're little attack dogs. And they said, hey, there go the bad guy. Every, every four years, every four years, they can count on the black people to be right in line, step lockstep, doing what they tell you to do. Donald Trump, he's destroying you. Is he destroying us or is he a threat to their control of this entire system? Now, in in addition to being a threat to their control of the entire system, these people who are paid and compensated within that system may be finding it as a threat to them as well. If if someone can point me and talk to me about what it is Donald Trump did during those four years and what he might do in the future, I might understand the Trump derangement. Don't hold your breath because they can't. They can never do it. I saw Stephen A. Smith going on and on about DEI and everything else. I'm like, tell me what this man has done to drive you completely nuts. How has it affected these people who make millions, tens of millions of dollars to the point where it drives them completely, completely deranged? But at this point, I just do not. I get the pressure that's on Charles and the money that these guys are getting paid and the requirements for receiving that money. The requirements for receiving that money. These aren't the things that are in your contract. They don't have to put them in your contract. You understand you're getting paid millions of dollars and that can go away like that. Think I'm lying? Ask Sage Steele. Ask a number of people who didn't do, they didn't follow the corporate line. They didn't listen to their puppet masters. They dared to think on their own. They dared to go, hey, this this isn't me. I'm not going to say this or that. If if I see a a man getting in a woman's swimming race, I'm going to say, hey, that doesn't sit well with me. I'm sorry, then you can't stay here. Oh, okay. But I'm not going to compromise my principles. But I guess that's okay with some people, especially guys like Cuck Barkley. Doesn't really matter, does it? But you see, it's not my place to tell you or even try to influence you in regards to who you're going to vote for. And I'm never going to be one who advocates violence. I'm just going to urge you compel you to wake up and use your own noggin. I'm here to tell you there's no boogeyman under the bed. They're making it up. It's a political monster's ink. There's no boogeyman. In essence, unlike Cuck Barkley, I'm not controlled by anyone. Do your own introspection. Turn off the networks. Stop listening to celebrities and athletes. Do your own due diligence and pray over those thoughts. And then have peace in your decisions, whatever they may be. And if you want to wear a shirt or a hat or whatever, make people like Cuckles squirm. Cuckles Barkley can't tell you what you can wear. Can't tell you where you can go. Can't tell you who you can hang out with. And definitely can't tell you what you believe. And hey, Cuck Boy, 
cut boy Barkley. We all dare you. Take your shot. We're right here. Let me know when you want to take that shot. Let me know what you think about Charles Barkley getting out there on television, telling millions of black people, if I see you on the street, I'm going to punch you in the face. Would you take that from any other person? But it's okay for Charles Barkley to go on a major news network on CNN, broadcast live to millions of people and say, directly to them, if I see you on the street, I'm gonna punch you in the face. I don't think that's gonna work anymore, Charles. I don't think you understand what's going on. I don't think you understand the movement. Millions of us no longer fear you, no longer fear the puppet masters. We are doing what we feel is best for ourselves and our family, and we're only bound under one principle, and that's God. Let me know what you think. Hey, if you don't like what I had to say today, I'm sorry, but ain't nobody threatening me because of what I feel, what I believe, and certainly not what I wear. Talk to you soon.